This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Today we're going to be doing a predicting the final 53-man roster heading into week three, post week two. Let's go and dive right into stock up, stock down. Who's going to make the 53-man roster for the Arizona Cardinals? Let's get started. everybody welcome back into another video definitely do me a huge favor smack that like button and subscribe for more arizona cardinals content on this channel we cover everything arizona cardinals news breaking news conversational pieces everything surrounding your favorite team so subscribe it up it's absolutely for free huge shout out here to bet you as the sponsor of the arizona sports fan throughout the entirety of the nfl season if you're looking for a brand new sports book bet us is the way to go currently right now they do have a 125 percent sign up bonus up to two thousand thousand dollars on your first three deposits and they got the fastest payouts in the entire industry check out bet us the link is in the description below all right everybody, let's go and dive right into it let's go in and try to predict the final 53 man roster for the 2024 arizona cardinals now this is post week two of preseason of course there's some players that have their stock up stock down and we're gonna go ahead and dive right into what i feel like is best for the 2024 arizona cardinals let's get started here now i want the arizona cardinals to only carry two quarterbacks I want the Cardinals to carry, obviously, Kyler Murray being QB1 and Clayton Toon. Now, do I think they're going to carry three? Probably, but I feel like I've seen enough of Desmond Ritter where I do not want him to use up a spot for a potential guy that we can use or a, a guy that gets picked up on another roster and flourishes over there, right? I feel like the Cardinals will be in a better position if they just carry two. So I got Kyler Murray and Clayton Toon being QB1 and QB2. Let's move on over to the running backs. James Conner is the obviously running back one for the Cardinals. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, right? A, a little interesting. Now, this is kind of how I feel like it's going to shake. Out. I feel like Amari DeMicardo will probably have that number two role for the Cardinals. Now, as the year goes on, I do feel like the Arizona Cardinals will probably trim down Amari DeMicardo's role and maybe transition into Trey Benson as being the RB number two. But right now, as long as James Conner can stay healthy, he's obviously RB1 for the Cardinals. So this is how I have it shaking out. We got James Conner, Amari DeMicardo, Trey Benson, and then Michael Carter. And I'm adding DJ Dallas. Now, DJ Dallas is added on here because of the sole purpose of him being able to kick return as well as punt return. I feel like that's one of the sole reasons why we ended up bringing in DJ Dallas, and I feel like it would just work out, right? Now, I get it. Five running backs don't sound ideal, but we do have the potential of using some of these guys in special teams as well. So, I feel like this is going to be the best way for the Arizona Cardinals to kind of come into the 2024 season with all these weapons that we have. And on top of that, James Conner's durability, we have not seen a healthy James Conner. So I would love to get as much backup as we possibly can and not lose any of these guys in the waiver wire and some other team picks them up, right? So to recap, James Conner, Amari DeMicardo, uh, Michael Carter, um, Trey Benson, and then DJ Dallas. So five running backs on the depth chart. Um, and then we're going to move on over to the wide receivers. We got Marvin Harrison Jr., a no-brainer. Michael Wilson, Greg Dorch being the one, two, three. And then Zay Jones, Tejon Palmer, Chris Moore, and Xavier Weaver. We've heard uh, Jonathan Gannon come out here and actually rave about uh, Xavier Weaver, about his explosiveness and how he can actually become a really good wide receiver. I think he's going to make the 53-man roster, or at least I hope he does. I know he can be a potential good good wide receiver in the NFL he just needs the opportunity and I would hate some other team to go out there and poach him off our practice squad if he actually makes it through the roster but he's a really really good wide receiver and just kind of needs a little bit of fine tuning and an opportunity so that's how I have our wide receivers shaking out let me recap that again Marvin uh, Michael Wilson, Greg Dorch, Zay Jones, Tejon Palmer, Chris Moore, and Xavier Weaver. Now let's go over to the tight ends. I got the Cardinals carrying three tight ends. Trey McBride, Tip Ryman being that primary guy that helps out on the offensive line obviously as a tight end though and then we got Elijah Higgins as well. Now let's move on over to the offensive linemen. This is where it gets a little interesting right? We've seen the Arizona Cardinals offensive line not really hold up very much we got to take with what we have. Um, so you might see a name in here and say, oh, I would cut him. The Cardinals are not in a situation where we can cut people, right? We're not in that situation. So this is who I feel like the Cardinals are going to bring over, right? So it's going to be Paris Johnson Jr., um, Evan Brown, uh, for a whole Will Hernandez, and then Jonah Williams being the, the top five 
uh, offensive linemen. Um, and then after them, Kelvin Beecham, Isaiah Adams, uh, Christian Jones, and then Elijah Wilkinson. Now, <laughs> the names that I mentioned towards the end, uh, Isaiah Adams and Christian Jones, They've struggled a lot in preseason. I'm not going to lie to you, but we do need as much depth as we possibly can, and maybe they can develop to become a really good offensive lineman, right? Maybe they just need to put a little bit more muscle. Maybe they just need to kind of redefine their technique, but they are seen to be really good players coming out of the draft. As of right now, they're not going to be starters, which I'm glad for, but that's kind of how I feel like the O-line position is going to shake out. Now, let's move on over to the defensive side of the ball. Let's first start off here with the outside linebackers. Uh, of course, we got Zayvon Collins and then Dennis Gardick being that number one and number two. We got Xavier Thomas, a rookie, as well as Cameron Thomas. Now, this is kind of be where <sighs> carrying four running backs might affect the outside linebacking core. And I can definitely very well see somebody say, well, you know, cut one of those guys to potentially bring in, in uh, Victor Dimikaji, right? But I don't know. I just have not seen a lot of guys really work out in preseason, but I feel like these guys are the ones that have the most potential. And looking at this list, the Cardinals need help. I don't know why the Cardinals aren't addressing it, um, but we need help, right, at the end of the day. But this is going to be the four outside linebackers we're going to be carrying. Of course, BJ Ojolari is lounging himself in the IR, so we're not going to be adding them to the 53, but those are the four outside linebackers, Zavin, Gardick, Xavier Thomas, and Cameron Thomas. Now, Cameron Thomas might have been an easy cut for me, but he actually showed out really, really well in week two of preseason, so I, I put him back on the list. Let's go with the inside linebackers. We got Kazir White, Mac Wilson C. Senior, Owen Papu, OP, um, and then Kreis Barnes. This is another position where you could potentially add somebody else with more depth, but I don't know. I'm going to keep it at four and kind of see how it goes. As long as they can stay healthy, because your White and Mac Wilson Senior are going to be the primary guys to get the, do the job done right on the inside. Let's go on the defensive line. We got Darius Robinson, uh, Justin Jones, Dante Stills, Bilal Nichols, uh, Tonga. Uh, and then Roy Lopez. We've had a lot of raves about uh, Roy Lopez in preseason. I believe we only saw him in week one. I'm not 100% sure that he was available in week two, uh, but there's definitely a lot of high praises from this coaching staff. So this is how I feel like it's going to shake out with the defensive line. Um, I, I'm a little bit more confident with the defensive line, especially with the additions of Justin Jones and Bilal Nichols. Stopping the interior run is going to be very, very crucial. And as long as they can stay healthy, I feel like they're going to be a really good uh, focal point for that defense, defensive line. Let's move on over to the cornerbacks. Sean Murphy Bunting, Max Melton, Garrett Williams. That's one, two, three. Um, and then Elijah Jones, Keetra Clark, and then Starling Thomas V. Uh, there is another rookie that we ended up getting um, in the later part of this draft, Davis. I don't think he's going to make the roster. I don't think we've really seen very much of him in training camp and or in preseason. So I feel like this is going to be the way that it shakes out. I'm confident in our uh, cornerbacks. Of course, I would be a lot more confident if we had more of a pass rush, but these are the cornerbacks I feel like we're going to be rolling with. Sean Murphy, Bunting, Max Melton, Garrett Williams, uh, Elijah Jones, uh, Keetra Clark, and then Starling Thomas the fifth. Let's move on over to the safeties. Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, Joey Blunt. Joey Blunt's got the ability to play special teams, so I want to bring him in. And then Deidre and Taylor Demerson. Man, I don't think anybody out there will will not have him on the list. This guy's been doing very, very special things. Um, he just looks like a really overall good guy, a good locker room guy, great personality, and he's a baller. We've seen him really show out here in week two and uh, week one of preseason, so definitely makes the cut in the safety list. Of course, we got special teams, Matt Prater, uh, Blake Gillikin, and then Aaron Brewer. Now, of course, there's uh, Joe Shimko, but I think if we're probably going to go with the veteran for a long snapper, and it's probably going to be um, Aaron Brewer, unless otherwise said, right? So let me know what your guys' list is. This is how I feel like it's going to shake out. Of course, there are some people out there that did very, very well in preseason, and that's what preseason is, right? To make sure your stock goes up so you can squeak into the 53. Now, just because the 53 is set doesn't mean there's not going to be changes, right? Especially towards the end part of uh, the list, right? With your Tonga, your um, your Keetra Clark, right? Any of those guys here in the bottom part of the list, a lot of things can be changed. Do I see the Cardinals potentially going after somebody in waivers? Yeah, absolutely. We're not the only people that are cutting our roster down to the final 53. There's still... 31 other teams doing the same. So I could potentially see the Cardinals going after some other players that other teams pick. But the biggest highlights, I want to carry two QBs. I feel like just carrying 
having that open spot with not having three QBs is very, very crucial. And as long as Kyler can stay healthy, you have to worry about the idea of QB three, right? So I would rather allocate that spot to a different position, running back, wide receiver, offensive line, um, edge, right? Just kind of really depending on where you think it's going to land. So ladies and gentlemen, what are your thoughts here in the comments below? Is there any player that I didn't mention here? Let me know who you want to make the 53. Put it in the comments below. I appreciate y'all for tuning in as always. Have a great rest of your day and go Cards.